tight place market, and Seattle is absolutely filled to the gills with the scariest seafood. Tender, succulent butter bombs from the depths of the Pacific. Looks like I'm gonna have to eat my way out of this one. Scary. It was just a fish, so we're fine. We're okay. So look, there's... Everything's fine. Everything's cool. I'm not scared. You are. No, I'm scared. Tell me about Pipe Place. It's a huge open air market that's really just made up of a bunch of individual small businesses like us. We're a family owned and operated, had the same owner since the mid 60s. Whoa. Yeah. If you're trying to get seafood at Pike Place, you guys are the place to go? For sure. We are 100% sustainable. So all the things we sell are cotton processed in ways that aren't going to negatively affect the species or the environment. This looks interesting. It is. Really <laughs> creepy. That is a wolf fish. There's some scary fish in the Pacific. I think I have nightmares about things like that. <laughs> What's this guy? That is gooey duck. Really the local specialty out here. Kind of creepy looking. So Can I, I like, touch it? Go for it. This is an hands-on fish market. The <laughs> siphon, the thing in the front there, that's what they used to dig big holes. <laughs> it's interesting that these guys over here aren't referred to as gooey in any way, because when you think gooey, you think octopus. Oh, that's just its head. Okay. Yes, that's where all its guts live. <laughs> is the beak still not, there? Yeah. What? Oh, it's creepy. hard. Yes, almost like a bird. Is this dead? Is dead, for okay. sure. I've had arguments with people over whether certain things are alive or not. One of them being this beautiful guy right here. Monkfish. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I've literally I hate had- you. Oh, it's a character builder. Since we freaked you out, yeah. you might as well get a little redemption as far as the seafood world and uh, get up there and catch one. Oh, I'll I can do that. I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> Yeah, that is so big. Easy for Courtney! Easy for Courtney! Yeah. 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 I did it! I'm really proud of myself. Hard work is done, now I eat. And wash my hands. But then I eat, that's the most important part. Boo, happy Halloween. Oh, hi. Did I scare you? Hey, what's up? Yeah. I'm looking to munch on something while I roam the, the market. Okay. Looking for something a little scary, anything like creepy. I got the perfect thing. How about Alaskan king crab? So these were a part of a big crab? Yeah. That's terrifying. They're perfect, man. Let's do it. Thank you. King crab, crack it up. King crab, crab, crab it up. <laughs> Get to eat this scary crab. Oh! That's no joke. Oh my gosh! You're kidding me, right? That's a quarter of one of the legs. That is unreal good. It tastes almost like a lobster, like it's a high quality, buttery piece of crab. And it's ice cold, but so refreshing. That scary monster of the sea is super buttery and delicious. It hurts to try to get in there, though. Those pokey things, they're, uh, they are sharp. Every rose has its thorn, I suppose. You know, it's a little briny, a little salty, but it's got a really, really sweet flavor to it. So it's like this perfect harmony of salty and sweet, but in this really refreshing bite. Stupid me, crabs aren't scary. Hello? Hey, what are you doing? Um, just at home, watching a scary movie. Scary movie, huh? Is it about octopuses? No, octopuses aren't scary, they're delicious. Oh, well, have you considered? <laughs> Hello? Octopuses are super scary. We have eight arms that can strangle you. We bite people with our beaks. Nah, they're delicious. I'm gonna eat them. It's a scary time of year. It's Halloween. I wanna eat something scary. Okay. Things that I'm afraid of that have eight legs. 
How about an octopus? Octopus sounds great. I want to know a little bit about um, Majigo. This was the very first sustainable sushi place in Seattle, correct? Nine years ago, we went sustainable. It was a hard change, but people should be doing this, right? It's just paying extra attention to the availability of fish and their populations, the way that you're catching them, etc. Right. I don't want me to be a special thing. I want everybody to do it. We're going to do octopus, and you might get eaten by an octopus, and that's going to be the show, yeah? You just scared the heck. <laughs> hey, we're going to have octopus today. It might get you, but don't scare me or anything. Die. <laughs> <laughs> it is really scary it's looking. Was it head? Head is not a technical word, it's a mantle, because that they have entire organ inside of this. So this is actually the outside. It's an octopus beanie. Oh, it's stretchy! Yeah, it's very stretchy. But yeah, it's exactly. so weird! And it's a copper-based blood, so it's got the weird smell to it. Metallic-y. It smells like pennies? Yeah, copper. Perfect. Pennies and fish. Pennies and fish. Mm. Pennies and fish. Pennies and fish. When you have a penny, you can eat some fish. <laughs> Let's get started just because I want to touch this guy again. Okay, so and also it sounds really good and right. creepy, but good. Oh, well, let's touch it more then. All right, all right, let's touch it appropriately. No, 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 no. High five! What dishes are we going to be making today? One is the cucumber and taco poke. We have the raw octopus mm -hmm. locally caught. We massage it for a long time and uh, put in a brine with salt, lemon, daikon radish, and some tea. What kind of tea? Hojicha, roasted green tea. So it's been cooked for two, three hours now. And after that, chill it down, then chop it up. And of course, poke means cubed. cubes. Exactly, the cubed octopus. Cool. It's a legit poke now. And uh, I put English cucumber, a little bit of the uh, sesame oil, secret garlic ginger sauce. Oh. Is there garlic in it? Maybe. Then a little bit of spice and a sprinkle of the macadamia nuts on the top. Ooh. So voila, that's the uh, poke. Cheers. That's so tender. Mm -hmm. So good. I think the brine also gives it a lot of flavor by itself. You can taste a little bit of body from that tea. Mm -hmm. The macadamia yes, nuts yes. give it a nice texture. Oh. That sesame oil, you only need a little bit because that can be very overpowering. Oh, it can be really intense, right. But it right, gives right. this nice, like, nutty, smooth, awesome flavor. You gotta hook me up with a second dish. All right, let's go to the second dish. Octopus stew. We cook the octopus the same way. Then after that, because it's Halloween, I thought we can bring Japanese pumpkin. Whoa. It's called kabocha squash. Carrots and bamboo shoots. After that, fish stock. A little bit of curry. Then after that, we put the octopus in, cook it for a while to finish it up. Second course. Second course, yay. I'm going for the tentacle and some broth first. A little heat. Not too overpowering. Mm -hmm. I can't get over the way the octopus tastes. This broth is incredible. Excellent, thank you. Black licorice, cinnamon kind of flair to so it. So probably that's a curry powder, and the Japanese spice actually has a, out of seven spices so many different aspects to it too. Curries can be very thick. Right, this one's really And this light. is super light, right. but still packed with flavor. It's like a perfect home for the octopus to swim in. That is true. And it's afterlife. Wow. Right? The pumpkin with the octopus in mm -hmm. one bite, it is similar to like a butternut squash, but it adds sweetness to it to make it a little more hearty. Right. It's insane. People talk about sushi a lot, mm -hmm. but most of the cooking is more like this, that kind of home cooking that I grew up with. It's like comforting, but it's not heavy. I'm surprised that something that can make me feel this good scared me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much mm -hmm. for everything and for showing me that octopus can be extremely delicious and not scary after all. Not anymore. I've made my way around Seattle's frighteningly delicious seafood scene. But is there anything left to try? Is there a monstrous delicacy laying dormant in the Pacific Northwest? There's only one way to find out. If there are any culinary spirits present, please make yourselves known. Guide me to the most petrifying, mouth-watering creature. E O D U C C K G O D U C It's pronounced gooey duck. Oh, looks like gooey duck's on the menu. Thanks, ghost friend. No problem. 
thanks for having me at the one and only Walrus the and the Carpenter. Uh, why the name? What does that mean? Uh, so it came from Alice in Wonderland, a Walrus and the Carpenter who befriend oysters and turn around and eat them. So I want to try this uh, scary little creature called not Geo Duck. And not Geo Duck, no. What's going on with Gooey Duck? It's a crazy weird clam that kind of tastes like a steamer. It's really sweet. It's crazy delicious. It's one of those things that I think most people are kind of wigged out by. I mean, if I were to judge its taste based off the way it looked, I probably wouldn't be trying it now. <laughs> but I'm going to trust you. I don't know if Please. it's a mustache, but I just, I feel as though <laughs> you're not going to guide me wrong. No, it's delicious. Well, I'm terrified and excited. <laughs> do you think that I can head in the back and help you whip some of up? Of course, pop on back. <sighs> All right, let's do <gasps> it was a ghost the whole time. Come on, back this way. Oh, yeah, I didn't see you. Went behind the wall. Hey. We're gonna blanch them quickly in boiling water for about 60 seconds or so, and then we'll just plunge them right into the ice bath, and we'll let them hang out there for a little bit. So, now that our gooey ducks are yeah, chilling, yes. let's make the squid ink Perfect. coconut milk. We're gonna grab coconut milk. Oh! So we're gonna take all the squid ink. So it's gonna be a little fishy, a little briny. Zest of a whole lime. Perfect. You know when you're like grating cheese and then you get down to the end and you're like, oh yeah. God, my nails. And then we'll do the juice of the whole lime too. And then we'll do a little bit of kosher salt. It went from almost looking like a key lime pie to... Kind of like a charcoal key lime pie, I guess. And that's it. So All right. We're gonna clean the gooey duck now. I'm excited and nervous, but excited and a little terrified. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna cut the whole meat out of the shell. I got it. Cool. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Brr -brr -brr -brr. Cool. You start from the top and you peel that whole membrane off. It's just like a sock. Keep going. Awesome. I did it. Perfect. Just cut the belly off. Just, yep, straight down the center. Oh my gosh, look yeah, how much guy, sand is in that there. There's a ton of sand in that guy. And everyone's like, oh, it tastes like the ocean. I'm like, no sh <laughs> in there. And now we're just gonna cut it super thin. So you can eat it like just a piece of it like that if you wanted to. It's delicious. Cheers. <laughs> Why is that so sweet? Isn't that cool? Yeah, sweeter than a normal clam, but like a, still like that nice ocean brine. Yeah, so we'll just cut a bunch up like this, and then we can just plate the coconut milk right on the base. Great. And then we'll plate the gooey duck, and we'll do a little pickled habanero, celery, and cilantro salad Whoa. right on top. Perfect. I like that you did black and orange for Halloween. I will go sit down and eat. Perfect. You're welcome to come and join me. We did it. Cheers, me. Cheers. So boom, boom. Spicy, sweet. It should be. Tasty treat. Cheers. Absolutely clean and refreshing and yeah. very bright. It doesn't even really taste briny. It's like the second that you bite into it, then it sort of gives up, because it's a little tough and a little yeah. spongy at first, and then exactly. all of a sudden it's like, nah, we're buttery, we got gotcha. you. <laughs> it tastes like a really fresh, vibrant garden, a little bit of heat that's, you know, kind of lingering if you really get it on your yeah. tongue. Yeah. That coconut milk, it's a, like a little bit nutty. This is like perfect for something scary, because you're like, listen, you know, it's, it's not as bad as you think. If you showed me that cow tongue hanging out of those two shells, and then you said, this is going to be one of the cleanest pieces of seafood that you've ever eaten. I'd be like, one, you're insane. Two, you don't know what clean is. I don't want to see your house. You haven't missed a beat in terms of texture, flavor, and color. It's insane for how simple of a dish is, like how simple this is to execute, how complex these flavors are. Masking a plate with so many ingredients is such a waste, especially when you have something that's unique to the Northwest. I mean, it's a product that we have that's native to here, which is really, really cool. And yeah. it's grown in a sustainable way. So it's not going anywhere and it shouldn't go anywhere. Yeah. And it's delicious, so eat more of it. Tell yeah. your friends. Okay. Eat more of it. Thank you for showing me of that course. gooey duck isn't intimidating and terrifying at all. No, so you see it, order it next time you see it. Honestly, only if you're making it. Well, you just have to come back to Seattle. Okay. I've tasted some strange but wonderful foods on my journey to find America's meatiest meals. But Seattle was full of surprises. Foods with tentacles, siphons, and beaks may cause fear of the unknown. But what the chefs here know is when you put all that aside, you can find something to satisfy anyone with an open mind and an empty stomach. Seattle, your fearless spirit has given me the chance to try some of the tastiest dishes from the sea I've ever had. And for that, I'm grateful. You see, it's not goodbye. It's see you later. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Oh, uh, I have a food show. It's a traveling food show. Travel the country in search of best meat dishes. It's pretty cool. You should check it out. Uh, There's no cameras. What?
No, they, they were here. Like, they were right there. And then I... What's happening? Am I dead? There, there was, there was, and then... Listen, lady. I was... It's fine. No, I'm not crazy!